Check one, two. Hey, hey, hey. Check one, two, one, two. Anything? Hey, hey. Perfect. Okay.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. We acknowledge that every holy sacrifice of the Mass is the greatest act of praise that we can offer, but this afternoon's has a special fervor, does it not? As we thank Almighty God for the gift of 125 years here at St. Joseph Seminary at Dunwoody in Yonkers. And I think this, uh, the fact that we're in solidarity with our Jewish neighbors and Yom Kippur adds as well to the sense of contrition that we sense as we begin this Holy Mass by calling to mind our sins and asking for the mercy of Jesus. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I fail to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who in your inexpressible providence were pleased to choose St. Joseph as spouse of the most holy mother of your son, grant we pray that we who revere him as our protector here on earth may be worthy of his heavenly intercession through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks, Chris. Who's preaching? A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, let no one have contempt for your youth, but set an example for those who believe in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Until I arrive, attend to the reading, exhortation, and teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was conferred on you through the prophetic word with the imposition of hands by the presbyterate. Be diligent in these matters, be absorbed in them, so that your progress may be evident to everyone. Attend to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in both tasks, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and those who listen to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke A Pharisee invited Jesus to dine with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. Now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at table in the house of the Pharisee. Bringing an alabaster flask of ointment, she stood behind him at his feet weeping and began to bathe his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people were in debt to a, certain, to a certain creditor. One owed 500 days wages and the other owed 50. Since they were unable to repay the debt, he forgave it for both. Which of them will love him more? Simon said in reply, the one I suppose whose larger debt was forgiven. He said to him, you have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with ointment. So I tell you, 
Her many sins have been forgiven because she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. He said to her, your sins are forgiven. The others at table said to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My, my two brother bishops, in generous sponsorship of this historic seminary, Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio and Bishop John Barris. Um, Bishop Massa, our rector, and your sterling faculty and staff. Bishop Walsh, former rector. Bishop Whalen and Bishop Calachico, Bishop Byrne and Bishop O'Hara. So many grateful and proud alumni, brother priests, our current seminarians, dear families and benefactors and board and friends and neighbors, do we not make our own this joyful afternoon the chant of the psalmist, this Jubilee Mass, how great are the works of the Lord. We acknowledge as we commence this Jubilee year, we acknowledge that this is indeed his work, his work, as for 125 years, this has been a house where his Holy Spirit reigns, where his sons have been formed to confess, mihi vivere Christus est. In looking for a charter guiding this seminary's mission, we could hardly do better than Paul's first letter to Timothy, as proclaimed in this afternoon's Liturgy of the Word. Bishop Moss, as I meditated on that epistle, I wondered why we spend so much energy on mission statements and charters and ratio fundamentalis and PPFs. We've got it all in St. Paul's letter to Timothy. The youthful Timothy, here's his formator, his rector, the apostle himself, exhort him to what? To reading, to study, to nurturing the interior gift of his vocation. Well, hear this Timothy say how honored I am to unite with all of you, with those with us on the Catholic Faith Network, in praising God for the legacy that has fostered that exhortation for a century and a quarter. Rereading the masterful history of this seminary by our alumnus and former professor, Monsignor Tom Shelley, this past summer, it's clear that these decades have hardly been carefree, without challenge, or easy. Why should they be? As the treasure of this seminary exists only to serve the master who embraced a cross and his church, which daily battles the gates of hell itself. Among the many noble, noble and inspirational motives that drove my predecessor, Michael Augustine Corrigan, to complete the project here on Valentine Hill, the project we this afternoon salute, has to be <coughs> in his choice of a patron, a patron for the seminary. Yes, his devotion to Saints Peter and Paul, flowing from his own deep allegiance to the eternal city, 
the eternal city of the two princes of the apostles, that's evident. On this hill, George Washington once called one of his abundant lodgings. Yes, his own affection for his own baptismal protectors, Michael and Augustine, is clear, isn't it, in the art and architecture of this seminary. But it was not to them, but to the foster father of the Redeemer, chosen as our patron saint. And the logic is so enlightening, isn't it? Especially to be savored during this year dedicated precisely to the Custos Redemptoris. For St. Joseph, of course, had two driving passions. One, to obey God's designs, and two, to love Jesus and Mary as the passion of his life. Like St. Joseph, here have come young men, men, believers, Christians, disciples, committed Catholics. Here they've come to discern God's design for their own earthly pilgrimage, daring to trust that it might even be the priesthood. Like St. Joseph, these men we recall with gratitude today discover that whatever God's intentions might be, an abiding love of Jesus and his mother Mary is all that really counts in the end. And then all else falls into place, right? All other distractions then fade. Valentine Hill, Valentine Hill, then gives us two hearts, the sacred heart of Jesus, the immaculate heart of his mother. Those two hearts beat at the very core of all reality. Those two hearts beat in loving rhythm here at this 125-year-old seminary dedicated to the chaste spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the foster father of the Savior of the world. It's no wonder we have so much to celebrate this Jubilee year. <clears throat> Let us pray. For the Holy Church of God, that the Lord may graciously watch over her and care for her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Cardinal Dolan, Bishop DiMarzio, and Bishop Barris, who lead the Borromeo Partnership, that the Holy Spirit may guide their work for the good of St. Joseph's Seminary and the entire church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here today, students, faculty, staff, families, friends, and seminary benefactors, on the occasion of the 125th anniversary of St. Joseph's Seminary, that the Lord may bestow his abundant blessings upon us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our seminary community, that the Lord may pour out upon us the gifts of his spirit, as we begin this new year of formation and study. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those burdened by illness, especially for Monsignor Curran, that the Lord may place his healing hand upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithfully departed alumni, faculty, staff, and benefactors of this seminary, especially Father Kevin O'Reilly and Father Joseph Katursky, and for all priests who died on this date, especially Father Joseph Marr, Father Edward Summers, Father John McAvoy, Monsignor Thomas Carroll, Father John Sorrento, 
Monsignor John Curran, and Monsignor Thomas McNulty. May they come to enjoy the rich blessings of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. We seek the unfailing intercession of Mary, our mother, and of St. Joseph, her spouse, as we make these and all of our prayers through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become spiritual drink. Thank you. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we prepare now to offer the sacrifice of praise, O Heavenly Father, we humbly ask to be sustained in our service by the prayers of St. Joseph, whom you call to watch like a father on earth over your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let Lord. us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and in honoring St. Joseph to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you, espoused to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, powers tremble before you. Heaven, the virtues of heaven, the blessed seraphim, worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we now acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Restored by these life-giving sacraments, O Lord, may we live for you always in justice and holiness, helped by the example of our patron, St. Joseph, who in carrying out your great mysteries served you as a man just and obedient through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bishop Massa. Kindly be seated for a moment. <clears throat> Permit me to uh, extend a welcome and thanks to all of you uh, for joining us in this uh, Jubilee celebration. St. Joseph Seminary in the year of St. Joseph, as declared by our Holy Father, gives praise to the Heavenly Father for 125 years of service to the faithful in Christ. Your Eminence, thank you. Thank you so much for your stirring words and your homily that uh, renew in us uh, that love for what and for, for those whom Joseph loves, our blessed Jesus and his Holy Mother. And uh, thank you for orienting us uh, by recalling our, our, our legacy, our past. Um, and I uh, joined by your brother bishops, Bishop DiMarzio of Brooklyn and Bishop Barris of Rockville Center and my brother auxiliary bishops from New York and so many priests and deacons, many of whom are alumni and others who have shared in the educational ministries of the seminary. Your eminence, uh, you honor us deeply by once again, uh, your joy, your wisdom that you have brought to this opening mass. I extend the warm greetings of our faculty uh, to civic leaders, um, representatives of our mayor, our fire commissioner, and representatives of the Yonkers Police Department. Welcome to you. And also our former rectors, Monsignor Vacari, Peter, hello. Good to see you. <laughs> it's rare that there's a Peter Vacari sighting, so I'm... <laughs> <happy> <laughs> Happy we captured it this evening. And of course, um, our beloved neighbor, Bishop Walsh, uh, our, also a previous rector, welcome to you. And also the members of our board of trustees, our religious superiors, men and women in consecrated life, permanent deacons and deacon candidates, master of arts students and alumni from our branch campuses at Douglaston and Huntington, and colleagues from other campuses and schools and from the offices of our supporting diocese. And in a particular way, I join our Vice Rector, Father Bill Cleary, in saying thank you, a big thank you, to the Dunwoody staff who make our life and work here so comfortable, so wonderful, and who have done so much to prepare for this evening's festivities. Also, heartfelt greetings to the families of our seminarians and the families of our faculty who have made the greatest of gifts to the church of today and to the future. We are, Your Eminence, indeed proud of our illustrious history and the shepherds who have advanced this great mission. Tonight, we honor especially the memory of Michael Augustine Corrigan. Archbishop of New York. We've had two votive candles next to his image in the hallway this week. Uh, and the founder of our school of priestly formation and theological education. But also we thank the seven archbishops who succeeded him. They chose dedicated teachers and formators, mentors devoted to forming men for the priesthood with, without which the church cannot be. And in the period after the Second Vatican Council, forming others for the vital collaborative ministries of our local diocese and religious communities that lead others to know and love Jesus and bring his healing and his justice into the world. For the dedication that took place 125 years ago this summer, the future Cardinal Farley took an Old Testament passage for his homily. Wisdom hath built herself a house. Wisdom has built herself a house. And of course, for Christians, wisdom refers to Jesus, the eternal word, the eternal wisdom of God. What was done here 125 summers ago in opening this seminary 
Bishop Farley suggested, was merely the extension of what our Lord had done 2,000 years ago when he called the first disciples and formed them in a new way of life. The chosen 12 were the first seminarians, Cardinal Farley said. And three years, the three years spent at the feet of their teacher by the lakes and on the mountainsides of Galilee was their seminary life. So every seminary worthy of the people whom its graduates will serve is merely a branch campus of the one that the great teacher founded back in Galilee two millennia ago. This house belongs to Christ, our beloved. And we who currently occupy its beautiful limestone buildings and lush acres are so delighted on this jubilee night to open its doors to all of you. May his house be your house as well. Friends, permit me just to offer a, a few instructions about the celebration that <coughs> continues as we leave the chapel in a few moments. First, as we now move uh, from Mass, please note that there are two food stations immediately to your right with the option of eating in the cloister and immediately to your left with the option of eating in the dining room. There's also tables outside as you, uh, next to the dining room, there's a door that leads out into the, uh, the, the, the property closest to the building. Number two, we welcome you to consider purchasing a car raffle ticket <laughs> or taking a, a pledge card at one of the tables near the front entrance. Also near the front entrance are tables with seminary sweatshirts and other apparel. Please stop by our exhibit room near the entrance to the cloister, a little museum where you can view artifacts and photographs that tell the story of our wonderful seminary. Because the weather seems to be cooperate, cooperating quite well, in about 45 minutes, seminarians and alumni will face off in a softball game in our back fields. Uh, you're invited after getting some food or taking some food and drink with you out into the fields. There'll be uh, seminarians who will be able to direct you uh, to where the game will take place. So we really hope that you enjoy the evening and join us for other events uh, during our 125th year. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Bishop. Bishop Masha, thank you. We're blessed to have you as rector. Thanks be to God and what a splendid faculty and staff you have assembled. Thanks be to God for that. I've already expressed immense gratitude to Bishop DiMarzio and Bishop Barris for your continued collaboration. I'm glad you mentioned Monsignor Vicari. I, I bring greetings from two other former rectors with whom I spoke today, Cardinal O'Brien in Rome, who will be here later for the in the year, uh, who has to be remembered, and Monsignor Finn, who now oh, he doesn't miss the opening of an A&P, much less, um, <laughs> but he's he's uh, <clears throat> he's recovering a bit in the hospital and doing well. Thanks be to God as well as a couple former faculty members that asked to be remembered, uh, Father Tom Lynch and Monsignor Richard Dillon, who are both uh, recovering, thanks be to God. And we, we can never fail to forget our beloved Monsignor Curran, uh, asking solace and formorum uh, to continue. The um, little bit of a change, those alumni who are going to play softball, we will have the sacrament of the anointing of the sick right after mass if you wanna. All right. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Through the intercession of Mary, our mother, of St. Joseph, our spouse, of her spouse and our patron, may almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.